Scooter gang, scooter gang, come through clean. Scooter gang, hold up. Scooter gang, scooter gang, scooter gang, scooter gang, scooter gang, scooter gang. Welcome back, guys. If you'd like to check out any of the VSET line, please go to RevRides.com. Links in the comments. There seems to be a tire shortage these days, so I <clears throat> had to order these from Alibaba or AliExpress, whatever. Um, usually, I'll try and order them from eBay or somewhere. They might have them in stock, but... I had to get them from China. It took about 15 days. So just keep the heads up that you guys should probably just order spare tires when you get the scooter just to have them on hand because it might take a while to get them. All right. Here's what we got. 9065-6.5. says tube type on it. Looks like they are... 90 degree valve stems so we're using the trusty phantom as a tripod we got the camera mounted as a downward angle now i think i've seen a lot of like tech repair videos that are in this sort of style and i like it because you can watch exactly what i'm doing you're also going to be on my wrist on the wrist cam so you'll be able to see like this what i'm doing what i'm touching hopefully it's not too shaky i'll point out to things I like this bucket method because then you don't have to lift it as far, but then you can get also a second bucket and put it right next to this, and it'll be the right height to do all this work with the wheel here. Let's take a look at the tools here. Got a needle in those pliers. 21 millimeter wrench that I just went and bought with the Phantom. We got your cell phone in case you need to watch a video like this, and your Allen keys. And then I think one more thing is a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna grab that. All right, we're gonna start out by loosening this motor wire here. And you can see, trying to get an angle there. There's a little bit of a, these little tabs that hold the motor wire in. So you want to, there's a second one down here. Um, let's grab a light too, just a second hook so we're gonna have to get that one off too we need to take this brake caliper off so to do that it's a couple bolts let's see what i'm doing here just loosen these now look before you take them all off there's a black washer here and a silver washer here don't forget where those go you obviously need this to fit back together exactly how it was very carefully watch for anything you drop such as a little washer that's all it takes to make this a very big pain in the butt when you put it back together if you don't have all the pieces then it will just never work the way that it was so just keep all the pieces I like to keep them right here where I'm working on it I'm gonna just put this right here so nothing should touch it or mess with it. Now when this wheel comes off, it's going to lift some weight. So I think I'm going to scoot this back a couple of inches here. Just like that. Good, good, good. Now, we'll take our wrench. See, now that our rotor is opened up, we can take the wheel off. No, no issues. Kickstand's kind of in the way of this one, but what are you going to do if you want a beefy kickstand? It's worth it.
So we've got no washers on the outside, just washers on the inside of this. And it looks like the fender, that's pretty ingenious. The fender itself is the lock washer. So that's something new I haven't seen yet. Just pop that out with the screwdriver on both sides. Like so. Actually, looks like we're gonna have to take it off regardless. Just support your motor when you do this because this motor wire is prone to breaking. Do it like that. Hopefully you guys can see over this far. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. We're just gonna loosen them all a little bit. You wanna baby these bolts, guys. You don't want to strip any of these bolts, all right? And you may even want to just take one of these if you have time and go buy better ones from your hardware store that are the same size, same everything, but stainless steel because these just appear to be cheaper steel and they strip. So that's a bonus tip. If you want to actually upgrade these, it may be worth your time. I'm going to cut a slot in it to make it a flathead. We've re-angled so that now we are not shooting sparks on the scooter. We're going to give it another go right there. Popped it out. Let out all the rest of the air. We need to split the rim, which is these bottom screws. These always have Loctite, but they're better screws than the brake rotor screws.
when you guys get it flat you want to make sure you inspect the tube and this one had a weird flat where slime wasn't working and when I moved the valve stem I could hear the air moving out so I knew it was something wrong with the valve stem area and there was a little um, slit in the valve stem right where the valve stem almost meets the tube maybe half a centimeter down so that was definitely the culprit of this flat and the reason why slime did not have a chance at fixing it. Usually slime will fix most punctures unless it's catastrophic or unless it's near the valve stem like this. So there's a couple times where you do have to end up taking the tube out like this. The tire still has plenty of tread. I think this tire will easily get another thousand miles of use. So there's no reason to take the tire off. Just simply swap the tube, put the new tube in right here, and you're back on the road with less of a headache than taking the whole tire off. While you have everything taken apart like this, it's a really good opportunity to just get some Windex, clean down the part of the rim that you normally can't reach when the tire is all put together. Just get all that extra dirt, brake dust, whatever out of there, get it back to like new condition. Because your scooter likes it when it's clean, trust me. This might have been the hardest part uh, was using the pliers just to get the valve stem and all of this lined back up. You need to make sure you line it up so that the valve stem is halfway between two of the split rim screw holes. That's the spacing has to be right. I think if you have it off a little bit and you're stretching the valve stem that you might end up with a problem with the, a uh, another valve stem leak. So make sure that it's all lined up as perfectly as you can get it. Take your time. You really only want to do this once, right, so that it stays and then it works. And <clears throat> hopefully, you know, this sort of accident isn't recurring where something with the valve stem. Um, I know it could have just been a faulty valve stem in this case or a faulty tube. really important to put Loctite back on these bolts but they already did have a bunch in there so I'm just gonna put a little drop on each bolt Sometimes when you do this, the valve is a little bit hard to get your normal pump on, so you might need to use your extender. I usually pump it up about halfway or three quarters of the way, and then I'll put it on and install it. This is another really good chance to do some cleaning that you can't normally do. We're going to repeat the same process with the brake rotor bolts by putting Loctite and then tightening these down, alternating sides. Now we're going to line up everything with the washers and put our fender back on and get ready to slide this wheel back into the axle.
a little bit tricky, but hopefully you saw how that goes. One washer in between each. Look at that guys, nothing, it's the beauty of hydraulic brakes. Final step guys, I didn't forget, we gotta put this motor wire back. Here's a little bonus video about how to put in tire slime. I've been using this stuff quite a bit, it works usually on almost all sort of leaks, except for that back one. There's a problem with this the valve stem where the there was a puncture right on the valve stem. So it does come with this plastic valve core remover but I've had problems where these are cheap and they just break when you use them in the past so I went to the bike shop and got one of these it's a metal one highly recommend you get one of these super cheap pennies but it'll save you trouble over this when this breaks so first you want to uh, remove all the excess air this tire has a very slow leak right now so I'm hoping that this will fix it Next, you want to take your valve tool. And usually, I like to grab it with one hand, like this kind of, and hold it. And you can feel the valve stem start to turn. The rest of the air comes out. I'm sorry, this is hard to see, but it's hard to do this without blocking it. So there we go. It's the valve core. So now there's nothing holding the air in. So we can squirt our sealant in. On the side of the bottle, it's got a way you can measure this, even when it's upside down. I usually like to put in about four ounces, which is about halfway between these lines. This is a big bottle. But I put in less, like two ounces, and it doesn't seem to do its job. This is kind of hard to get on there sometimes, but you gotta hold the back of the valve stem so you don't push it until you get it like that. Now we're gonna squeeze in approximately four ounces. Excess. Put the valve stem back in. Get your tool. Screw it back in. I'm in no way sponsored by slime, I just like the product. can be hard to get it on when there's no air. You might need an extender. So I typically like to blow it up halfway, spin it a bunch of times so that all the slime moves around. And then we're gonna blow it up the rest of the way. I always double check 
that your valve core is tight. There we go. I just tightened another hair there, so that makes a big difference. It'll leak over time otherwise. So this time I'm gonna take off my extender so I don't lose any air. I got these tires at 50 PSI. I love them. I love these tires. Gotta make myself a couple of out of bands. Girl calls me up cause she know I'm the scooter man. She know I'm the scooter man. I got real big bling. I'm a real cute thing. See the risk you gang. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Scooter gang always pull up. Scooter gang come through clean. Scooter gang, hold up. Scooter gang, scooter gang, scooter gang, scooter gang, scooter gang, scooter gang.